say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. What are you doing here? I'm ready to eat. Yeah, always. Yeah, I'm always ready to eat. <laughs> We've had a lot going on today. It's a busy day. It's a fun mm -hmm. day. We're cooking over the fire again today because we did have a break in the clouds. It's nice today. For it's 10 beautiful. Minutes. Yeah. We're working on our ark, just That's in right. case. Okay. <laughs> but it has rained a lot and it's so mucky and nasty out, which is obviously the best time a sheep would want to have a Babies. baby. That's in right. a pile of mud. Yeah. So we put her up the other day, milkweed. Yes. And we could see that she was going into signs of labor. And right. a lot of times they'll stick their lip out and they'll lay down and they'll kind of grunt. And it's just like a real mommy. Right. Sometimes they go to the hospital, they start having contractions, and then they feel better and they, they go home. home. Yeah. Two days later, and that's exactly what happened. She came this happened today on shoot day, which is really good. And I just let her free because she wanted out. Millie was barking weird. Yeah. And the guinea was going crazy. So I peeked. I was making my fire. I peeked down there and I saw a ball of white. Uh -huh. And I saw... Uh, milkweed standing there in an unusual stance. Right. So I ran down there and well, here's what I found. All right, we have some awful cute babies. They're always cute, but this, this brown, is, this, this brown is one's adorable. It is. We're into our gender reveal. We have no idea. So I hope she didn't get upset with us. She never does. She knows what, see what See what we got here. All right. What do we got? That looks like a little boy. Boy, look at what a good looking kid that is. Yeah, little boy. Now, again, a lot of people see these and they think they're goats. They're not. These are katahdin, so I shouldn't have called it a kid. But... So, boy's brown. Let's see what the white one is. Let's see what you are. That was like a little girl, right? A little, little boy and a little girl. Okay, so the white girl and a brown boy. Boy, he is cute he as cute? a button. That's a different coloration. We've not seen that yet. He's adorable. Look here. Look at that face. <laughs> That's a face any mother could love. Here's another one. Here's his little sister. Aren't they sweet? And she's bigger than him, isn't she? Oh, yeah. Now, if he's... you notice that that, grunt, that low grunt she's making, that's a baby call. She wants her babies. She's concerned about her babies. They are so precious. There you go, kiddo. A little white spot on his head. Now these are fresh. <laughs> I mean, these are just Born today. hours old. I heard Millie barking up on the hill. It was a different kind of bark, and I knew something was going on. Sure enough, maybe you're next. Got babies coming out of our ears. That's right. You know what? Last week we did blackened fish. Mm -hmm. Delish. Spring's coming. Mm -hmm. I'm on a fish kick. You're on a fish I kick. I know. And today we're going to do something that's so delicious. This might bump us up into close to ranger land today. You know, we got yeah. three, we got tenderfoot, we have cowpoke, and we have ranger. A lot to this one, yeah. It's not uh, that complicated, but delicious. it's. I'm going to say it's a, it's borderline to ranger. So today we're going to do some wonderful recipes, but before we did that, we're not going to the ocean. That's right. We're going to Elizabethtown. We're going to visit with Barry, find out what he's got on hand, and we're going to bring some back here and cook it. Now, spring is coming. I'm dying to fish. I know. We're going to Florida. We're going lots of places, so we're going to show you some wonderful recipes. But first, let's get some seafood. We're in Elizabethtown today. Now, it's, it's a little active back here, all kinds of stuff going on, people coming and going, but that's an average day here. It stays pretty daggone busy. This is Barry, but this is the star Olivia. That's right. I've, heard, I've seen her catching fish. I heard she's just a monster at catching fish. She does. But well, what happened when I walked in the door? I smelled those. It's a heavenly smell. Now let's talk about getting those fresh. You're a southern guy. Where are you from? Mobile, Alabama. Dolphin Island, Alabama, actually. 
And so you grew up fishing right. and in the great outdoors. That's one of the best foods in the world. How's the southern boy eat one of those? Show me how, show me how to do it right. Well, not much to it. I mean, everybody down there, you, you, you'll get tired eating it because you've had to peel it so much. But uh, if you hold it in your left hand, put your thumb right up under it, it fits perfect. Most people suck the heads. Now, I don't do that. I'm not that big into it. But what we do, just pull the first ring off, squeeze it a little bit, boom, and it's gone. So I could knock out that pan in a minute or two. You know, I used to drive to the coast just to back up to a boat so I could get fresh stuff. Right. Now I'm seeing it right here behind you. I'm seeing shark, I'm seeing sea trout, I'm seeing flounder over here, I'm seeing snapper. A couple years ago, I was, I was down, I think it was down at St. Joe's, and I was fishing for flounder. I was fishing for them just like a fish for bass. Right. Just use a little, you know, a little shrimp bait. And they, they hit kind of like a bass. But then I went to clean them. I was like, whoa, 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 wait. This is not your typical critter. These yeah. things lay on the bottom, their eyes are on top. Can you show us how you clean a flounder? Well, a lot of people like to eat them whole. And when we eat them whole, you, you can fry them, bake them, or grill them. But a lot of people want to stuff them. Now, if you wanted to fillet the fish, these are small, the ones we have in this week. And they're intended for self-serving whole. Right. Now let's talk about this fish for just a second. If it was in its natural state, it he's lays flat. just like this. His eyes, now they're born, when they're born, they swim like this. Then when they right. get a little bit bigger, they lay in both eyes. That eye rotates and comes up on top. Yep, they both of them be honest. Hey, I wish I had a hole one for you, but unfortunately these are already done. But if you cook this hole, this line down the middle goes right down his back. Right. If you stick the fork in on that line and go either way, you push the meat right off the bones and it's 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 probably the best bony fish it is. But if you want to fillet him, you'd cut right down the line, the same thing. And you would cut back. Got a little bit of bones with that one. And then you'd flip him over and do the same thing on the back. But you're going to come off with four fillets. I got two ants that will not touch a fish, but they'll eat flounder. So no, the fish they'll eat. Who is it, Dad? Aunt Audrey. <laughs> and she's Dad? from Kentucky. And who has Mama? Mama won't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> She I won't eat any fish. It. That's right, she will. <laughs> but this is this is one fish a lot of people eat that won't eat any other kind of fish because it is very white mm -hmm. and flaky and mild flavored. Yeah. Now some people want to stuff them. And how would you how would you how would you prepare them to stuff? If you're gonna stuff him, you cut right in here, cut you a little slit. All right. And then you just cut back. And you could stuff your What if you put a crab cake in there? Man, you could probably do that. It'd probably be good. I got, do you know anybody that makes crab cakes? <laughs> Livy, do you know anybody that makes crab cakes? Um, you. <laughs> ah! This is one of our one of our fresh crab cakes. You could probably use about a half of one. What I would do, stuff it back in there like that, and that's made with jumbo lump crab meat, which is fairly hard to get. I think I'd have to try that myself. I like the sound of that. Now, uh, fresh oysters, you got them on the, on the shelf here. Let's see how to open one of those bad boys. All right. Old school, we used to beat on it, knock a little hole in the front. I don't know why we never did this, but nowadays they just go right back to the hinge, pop it. Now my grandma used to do this for a living. No kidding. Yep, she shucked oysters for a living. You want to try that? Sure, I do. Salty. Man, oh man. That's the good. It tastes like the ocean. Well, I tell you what, I thank you very much for talking with us today. Yes, sir. I know what I'm having for dinner this weekend. <laughs>
some Tonys. And hey, and don't forget, we'll put a little bit of that seasoning. And your special seasoning. The blackening. Exactly. Perfect. Just a dash. Then we're going to put those over your fire and saute those for a little bit. Okay, we're going to do an eighth a cup of flour, about an eighth a cup of a white wine. And this just does this one little pie. So yeah, like, if you want to make 26 of them. Just, right. And we did it in amounts so that you can go half, right. quarter. All right, and this is about a tablespoon of chicken broth, then a quarter cup of half and half. And this is going to be our mixture that's kind of thicken up in our vegetables, and we're going to add crawfish to it. Gotcha. So we're just going to mix crawfish, this Crawfish, crayfish, crawdads, crawfish, mud bags. Yes. Come, whatever you want. Now we got about a cup of these. Last time we did a cup of turkey, so now we're going to do a cup You know the of problem with these is when you see them sitting like this, all by themselves. You want to eat it. Oh, that's nice. And I've cleaned most of these ahead of time. So they're so delicious. Aren't they good? Now, as soon as our vegetables are sauteed, we're going to pour all this together. Got to make us a pie shell. When you use lard in pastry, it's the best. Or whatever you do, it's the best. So here's some of our lard that we rendered down. We're getting down. We might have to make some more. You know what? That's no problem. We can do it. And I just this is sat out a little. That's why it's a little gooey. I like a lot of lard. Apparently. Can you give me you some need? sugar? I need some sugar. sugar. I'll give you some sugar. And I always add sugar to my lard. And I probably have about two tablespoons here, just because I love our lard so much. And then, a, I don't know, about a tablespoon of sugar. So I do a lot of lard. Let's put in, start with about half a cup of flour. And I mix that in first before I do anything with water. And this is a kind of feel thing. And this yeah. kind of kind of, you know when it's right. You just kind of make what you like. And people have their own recipes. And you can just use your own dough recipe. But use lard. you got to use lard. All right. Give me a little bit of water in there now. I think we're good. And so really, you're just making enough to, to make a lining for the bottom of the pan yep. and then a little top. put over the top. And that's such a tiny little pie shell, so it's not going to take a whole lot. So I'm going to divide it in half here. And really, if you're doing this for yourself, one is a meal. Yeah. If you're splitting so. it with other stuff, you know, you can split it with somebody. But man, it's good. It's, it's kind of rich, though. There's a lot of butter in it. Yeah, it's, it's delicious. Delicious. Isn't it nice to cook outside? If yeah, you get something, if something gets in your way, you throw it over your shoulder. That's right, just throw it out to the animals. That's right. It's almost Somehow hot. I get it. It's almost hot today. Right, we're just going to go ahead and stuff that in there. You've done this before, haven't you? Yeah. Now we're just going to pour all this in. Oh. Isn't that good? Look at that. Isn't that cute? Now we're going to make a little top for it. What we had left. I know where you got your egg out for. You do? Put some egg white on top of it. Oh, yeah. Make it, it nice it. and sheeny. That will make it sheeny, so that's nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How's that look? Got your little vent. Yep, I got the knife to do the little vents. And if you want, you can put a little paprika on top or some more seasoning on top. Yeah. But we're going to go ahead and put an egg white on there to get it. Look at that. That's Isn't as that pretty? pretty as it can be. All right. It's ready. Let's pop it in the pan. All right, now we're going to let that go for 35 minutes at 400 degrees, and that'll give us time to get our fish ready. Now, for the beginners, we're always going to put the lower thirds if you're using charcoal briquettes. Now, we've used this pan for something earlier today, and it's already got grease in it. So we're going to start heating this pan up for our fish. Now, we're stacking today. The one on the bottom is going 35 minutes. The one on top is going 15 to 20. This is funny. Your grandmother, she would make her cookbooks and put it under somebody's this name. This old book, yes. This is old from Florida where, where they ended up. And this she is put mine. Nikki Lynn Solomon. Never made Devil it. Devil crabs. That's my recipe, though, so it's got to be good, right? Even though I never made it. Tell us how to make these. And we're going to cut it in half, the recipes yeah. for a bunch. We're just going to stuff this Because we're just under. stuffing this guy. Right. You, we boil some crab legs, so we're going to take, and you could use canned or lump crab meat, about a cup of crab meat. All right, now, here's the thing about breaking crab legs. When you take this, and it's probably not good enough to where you can see but when you take this if you see that right there you see how that moved down Nick yeah when you pull this out that hmm. cartilage comes out that's your secret I'm telling you secret that's your secret there, I, I didn't know how you, you did twist so well. this off now you see how that slid down yeah you see it's almost transparent now you what I do this. then I'm gonna take this and tap this okay what's that do that gets it on down in there now I'm taking I'm gonna go to the halfway point now look if you can see that's kind of transparent right there the main part of the meat's down here so you're going to break that where the half is. Who taught you to do this? I had to learn. And you pull it apart. Oh, wow. I never get a whole piece. And look. Don't. We need it. <laughs> I'm going to try it. All right. Did you see what I did? Yeah, I'm going to try it. I pulled the little piece. 
I'm an expert here. You are good. And you didn't you tapped it. Let me see. Right? Can you see down in there? I think okay. I can. Just break it like right here. Mm hmm. It's a little high, but I think it'll work. Uh huh. Oh, you see what I'm saying? You do good. You know what I'm saying you got to be quick around wow. here. Wow. Now watch. Here's the one-arm method. All right. See how quick I can do it. Faster motion. Pull it out of here. Matt, this comes around. Pull this out. One-handed crab leg picking. I'm gonna tap it. Boom, boom, boom. Halfway. Break it apart. Pull it out. It's one-handed crab. Next time we're at a restaurant, you do for both of us. How's that? I usually have all of it eaten. Before. You do. <laughs> you eat it so quick. So about a tablespoon of green peppers chopped up real small, half a teaspoon of paprika, one tablespoon of mayonnaise, and we're going to take an egg yolk and put it all in that, and we're going to put half a teaspoon of celery salt, half a teaspoon of Worcestershire, and then half a teaspoon of dry mustard, a little bit of salt and pepper, and I'm going to mix it up with my fingers and Good stuff your flounder. Good to go. That's it. Beautiful. I'm going to come back with a little bit of lemon. Then after that, all we're going to do is take some melted butter and take a little bit of our blackened seasoning. That and comes in just, handy. Just, yeah, yeah, we don't waste anything. No. Then boom, we're good to go. We're good to go. All right, now the last step, we want everything to come together. Now remember, like we talked about earlier, preheat your pans right. before the fish, before the pot pie. Mm -hmm. Always preheat them because you want to, I mean, you're going to preheat your oven. Right. That is essentially an oven. You want right. to get that temperature inside there, it cooks the same as an oven. All right, we're going to get our oil going, which we already have. We've got our okra soaking in buttermilk. We're going to take two parts cornmeal. Here's scientific method right here. One, two, one part flour. I like your measuring cup. Mix that up, get you some Cajun seasoning, whatever you like. I'm gonna put some Tony in there, I love Tony. Mix that up real good. And that yeah. is our simple, remember that, two to one and Tony. All right, now we're gonna take our okra. Yeah. We're gonna pop in here. Remember shake and bake? Mm -hmm. Still have shake and bake? Yeah, they, I don't yeah. know if they still sell that or not. I used to shake and bake too. In the commercial? Yes, I like shake and bake. We're just going to take these and we're going to drop them in our oil, which is sufficiently hot. All right. They look pretty good. And I know people who don't like okra, but they like it fried. Everything's good fried. Delicious. Look at that, look at that. That's amazing. Look at that, just flaky. Yum. That is some of the flakiest, most delicious fish. That mm. is the best fish. Wow, that's delicious. Look at that, flaky, beautiful. Just look at that. Mm. Look at that fish. That's amazing. Crab cake is perfect. Mm -hmm. Yum. Sidekick, get it, sidekick. I get it. Fried huh? okra, how can you go wrong? Mm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's good. That's really good. Now, we're in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. We did a show down there, and it was beautiful country, seafood everywhere, and we did a crawfish pie. Crayfish pie. Yeah. Well, crawdad crayfish, pie. Crayfish, crawfish. Doodaddy, mud bug, okay. whatever you want to call it. It was a fun trip. That was fun. We need to travel more. Yeah, we do. That was very enjoyable. Not to be confused with our pot pie that we made with the already seasoned crayfish. Yeah. And look. Oh, how wow. this comes out. Now we're just gonna, we share, so we're just digging in. Oh. But you look at that. Now mm. you got a spicy taste coming in here. You got the crayfish. It's a whole different ball game. Yum. You gotta admit the shell's the best too. Isn't it good mm. when you make homemade with that lard? So let's move the top back just a little bit and you can see the colors. Yum. Is that not beautiful? It is. And look, we got, we got a lot of meat in there. 
Now, you know, we're, we're starting to visit some small businesses, some folks with a, right. the foodie entrepreneur mm -hmm. spirit. Something unique. We stopped by, did a real quick visit in Elizabethtown and found some of the best olive oil. Oh, yeah. And they carried some of our friends' stuff. So it was just a real quick trip. We were already in Elizabethtown getting some seafood. Right. Anytime we go somewhere to pick something up, we're going to try to find some folks around. Yeah. So, so keep that in mind if you know some folks out there. We want to feature you. We want to talk about your food and yeah. what you provide. So let's take a real quick trip back to Elizabethtown. We're in Elizabethtown, the Herb and Olive Market. I like the sound of that. Serena. <laughs> Walked inside, took a look around. It's kind of got that old general store feel. Right. Balsamic vinegar. Right. Olive oil. Yes. All these things that are healthy and good. Right. And let's start looking at your products and then and I recognize some names. Mm -hmm. How important is it to you as an owner and a partner with your friend to have foods like we talked about off camera. No herbicides, pesticides. I call them poison. Right. How important is that to you? If you're doing this, you want to give people the best stuff you can buy. Right. Absolutely. Tell us about how this whole thing started. Yeah, um, very important. So it, it actually did start with um, me searching for these types of food for my own family. And uh, as I traveled all over Kentucky looking for these farmers um, to provide these foods, um, I, I started forming relationships with them. And the more I did that and, and discussed with my friends and neighbors, um, the more they wanted it. So we realized that it was probably something that we could bring to our community. And so we, we just, yeah, we used to go out, gather individually, pick up the, the meats and eggs and cheese and bring it back and sell it. And uh, it just kept growing. Yeah. Talk about these huge vats. Yeah. Of olive oil. Right, Where's right, all this stuff right. come from? We've um, brought in some of the, the best quality olive oils and uh, vinegars um, that you can find. It's um, regional. So we have everything from um, Spain, even California, but um, we follow uh, the seasons and as their agriculture products. So olive oil is so good for the body, um, and we wanted to bring quality olive oil to our community. And so this has been a new addition to our market and, and people love it. I'm seeing folks sitting here grabbing a bite. Well, we have a coffee shop um, attached to our market. So yes, yeah, we serve um, an olive oil um, and cheese plate. And so they'll come in and get a sandwich or an avocado toast. And we use all of our, our products from our store. So if we walk through the store, what would we find? What could you find? Oh, wow. You could probably find everything you need to serve your family um, uh, meals from breakfast to dinner every day. Right here in the turnaround, as so many old Kentucky towns have, right here. What's your, if somebody's saying, okay, I got to go check this place out, what's your address? Um, 32 Public Square, Elizabethtown. Can we go inside and take a look? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. That was delicious. Yeah, delicious. You know what, we experiment and we have this stuff before we bring it out in front of you. When I pulled that fish out and his tail fell off, I knew he was done. Yeah. And it just looks so delicious. I wanted to eat the tail. I'm going to eat the tail. Okay. Because they're crispy. Like yeah. Potato chips. But if you wanted to look at a recipe, and we've got 800 billion of right. them to look at, where would you go? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Where do you go? I go to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Oh, really? This is you Dot com, too. Oh. Seriously? Yes, yeah, that's where I get all my recipes. Wow, that's where we met back yes. in the 40s. Yeah, we did. You know what? There's so <laughs> many great recipes there, and we're not ringing our own bell, but there's some really good stuff in there. I think it's good. There's some really good stuff in there. Okay, once you get to YouTube and you're in our videos, make right. sure you hit subscribe. That way, anytime anything new comes out, boom. You get it. You get Wonderful. it. Wonderful. And our Facebook page is growing by leaps and bounds. We really want to share information with folks out there. There's folks from all over the world on there, all mm -hmm. over the United States. We did a Facebook Live the other day, and I was absolutely tickled to death to talk to people from Canada, oh, yeah. from Montana, from Oregon, California, California Florida, Texas. Alabama, Arkansas, Texas, all over the place, and a bunch of folks from Kentucky, obviously. Right. And one more little announcement. After this show, on KET, they're going to start their pledge drive, their okay. spring pledge drive. Now remember, KET is a very valued outfit. 
Shows like ours would not be possible without KET. So let KET know how much you like them. Make sure you tell them about our show mm -hmm. and do what you can. Right. Do what you can. And you know what? The sun's sinking low. That means it's all about good times, good friends. And we need to eat. I'm good eat. eat all. Yum. I'll let you have a little bit. Oh, that's good. Please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.